Hi everyone, Ian here from the Media Center and today we're going to be looking at the difference between Rec 709 and Log. These are gamma curves which affect the dynamic range in the image. The greater the dynamic range, the more information you'll have in your shadows, your midtones, and your highlights at the same time. So let's have a look at how this works in practice. In its base form, 709 holds a lot of contrast and saturation. If we refer to an IRE scale, this is because the gamma curve stretches its brightness values, bringing shadows closer towards zero and highlights further towards 100. Now, for environments which are evenly lit, this produces a pleasing image straight out of the box and requires minimal color correction. However, Rec. 709's gamma curve comes with a major flaw, and that's its dynamic range, of which it only holds about five stops of light. This means when Rec. 709 is faced with a challenging lighting environment, which has both shadows and highlights across the frame at the same time, it's incredibly difficult for it to capture all of the detail. This is because the light variation is just too extreme, and normally we have to prioritize and choose one end of the scale to protect. If we protect the highlights, we risk crushing our shadows beyond zero and losing information. Similarly, if we choose to protect the shadows, we will most likely clip our highlights beyond 100, and once again, we're gonna lose detail within the image. Once this occurs, no information in that area can be restored. In addition to its limited dynamic range, each stop of light is also unevenly distributed. So highlights are squeezed into just one stop above the white point, normally between 90 and 100% on the IRE scale. This means there's limited range and space for a gradual light roll off to occur. So this is where log becomes really important and really shines. Unlike 709, log holds a much greater dynamic range, approximately 12 to 14 stops in most modern digital cinema cameras. This is still captured across the same IRE range, but instead of stretching out the brightness values, it squeezes them closer together, bringing the shadows and highlights closer towards middle gray. Doing this flattens the image and removes saturation, enabling more information to be retained across both ends of the brightness scale at the same time. But a caveat with this way of shooting is that log requires a greater amount of post-production and color correction to produce a pleasing image. In addition, shadows in a log gamma curve are more prone to noise and digital grain because the stops of light which hold the most information sit above middle gray. Because of this, Log likes light, and a common workflow is to expose to the right, which means overexposing past the recommended middle gray, skin tone, and highlight value. Now, overexposure doesn't mean blowing out your highlights, it just means you let more light hit the sensor. We're able to do this because Log has more highlight range than Rec. 709, and the ability to bring back a greater amount of information before it clips. So this allows us to bring our shadows closer towards the mid-range, which also helps dissipate the digital noise, creating a cleaner image. Once we've captured the log image and all of its detail, we're able to remap it back into a Rec. 709 color space suitable for viewing. So you might ask, what's really the point in recording in log if we're just gonna turn it back into Rec. 709 again? Well, that's because our original starting point will have more information available to begin with, so we can manipulate the image to greater effect and still retain far more detail than we ever could if recording 709. Overall, this is going to help create a more even cinematic image. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any questions, please come and talk to us in the Media Center. Until next time, keep shooting, keep being creative, and we'll see you soon.